Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about earthquakes. Alright, in this class, I want to try to prove or disprove whether there are actually two earthquakes in the book of Revelation. You often only hear about one earthquake. You hear people talking about a global earthquake that's supposed to shake down the entire planet. Shake every building, every wall, every idol is supposed to fall during this earthquake. You also hear that this is tied to the day of the Lord. And if you've been around our channel, you know that we are trying to get our heads wrapped around this whole day of the Lord thing. To understand what's going to happen. So we can kind of get prepared for it. Even going as far as trying to find out. When it's going to happen. Based on the prophecies given by Daniel. Chapter 12. And this is something I've been looking at for a while. But. When I actually try to find out anything about it nobody is saying anything at least on YouTube let me go over here to Google and see what they say two earthquakes in revelations <coughs> it's saying the big one first one Now this one is talking about earthquakes, but it's talking about past tense earthquakes back there in 750 BC. Now I want to look at that one because I was interested to find out about that earthquake, so I'll save that one. But notice that nobody is talking about how there are two earthquakes. Now this shouldn't be too surprising because you have to remember that the majority of the people who are so-called on watch for the day of the Lord, they're only really watching to see when they're going to make the great escape. They're only paying attention up to the point where they are supernaturally removed from the planet and they don't really care what happens after that. And so... And so they aren't really digging deep into the facts of what's presented to us over there in the book of Revelations. Now, before I jump over there, I do want to show you guys something down here in Matthew chapter 24. And how these earthquakes are, in fact, tied to the day of the Lord. You see right here in verse 29. It says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Now, it's talking about the sun darkened and the moon not giving her light. And then it's talking about the powers of the earth sh shaken or the powers of the heavens shaken. Then it goes on and says, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with great power and glory. Now there is a wealth of information in here, in these verses right here. Like for instance where it says that the tribes will mourn. This is the same thing the scripture is talking about when it says some shall awaken to remorse and others shall awaken to shame. This is talking about that great and dreadful day of the Lord. But look at when it's talking about this would occur immediately after the tribulation of those days. And the days that he's talking about we see up here is actually the beginning of sorrows which is where we're at now that's the time that we're living in now the beginning of sorrows you can see all of the events leading up to verse 28 and even verse 28 that describes this time period that we live in now 
that's actually going to end over here with verse 29 and the sun and the moon are darkened and this is what led me to do this search here because when I looked for when the word sun and moon are included in the same verse I found four hits over in the book of Revelation and both of which are tied to this earthquake and so that's what I believe Revelations is talking about when he says the power of the heavens shall be shaken because in other places I believe it says that the heaven and the earth will be shaken and so I'm looking over here in Revelation for the times when sun and moon are in the same verse and is there in Revelation chapter 6 and verse 12 it says and I beheld and when he had opened the sixth seal and lo there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood so this is tying this earthquake to the sixth seal this is what I will refer to as the sixth seal earthquake we do understand the seals at this point we have done a class recently on YouTube called the seven seals revealed four horsemen apocalypse explained we wrote that it was a scriptural account of the seven seals found in hidden biblical texts hidden biblical texts that told us of the seven seals now we understand that there's a lot of people who have dreams about the seven seals have intuition about the seven seals or learn about the seven seals from various places and so there's a lot of ideas about the seven seals out there but in this class you can check out on YouTube this is a scriptural account this is actually what the Bible says about the seven seals and so we understand what the seals are and we understand that we are currently in the sixth seal waiting for the sixth seal to close and it will close with this great earthquake described in Revelations chapter 6 and verse 12 but notice how in both chapter 6 and chapter 8 verse 12 it's talking about how the sun and the moon will be smitten will be darkened but then when you look over here and look at what's going on in chapter 8 you see that the third angel has sounded in verse 10 so by now the trumpets are already blowing and you come back up to the beginning of chapter 8 and you see that the trumpets start blowing only after the sixth seal has been closed we understand from the third testament of the bible that the earthquake comes at the end of the sixth seal and it is after that that the trumpets will start blowing you see in verse 6 of chapter 8 that the seven angels are preparing to blow the trumpets in verse 6 but then when you look at verse 5 you see an earthquake this what you see in Revelation chapter 8 and verse 5 is the same earthquake that you see in Revelation chapter 6 and verse 12 and Matthew chapter 24 this is the initial earthquake this is what is referred to as the day of the Lord you see right here in verse 12 have you have the earthquake and then you start to see down here like in verse 15 where the mighty man and the bond man and every free man hid themselves in the den and in the rocks and in verse 17 they're saying that the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand this is the great day of the Lord this earthquake will be one of the main events of the so-called day of wrath but when you look over in Revelation looking for the word earthquake you see that there are earthquakes mentioned in chapter 11 It's mentioned in verse 13 and verse 19 but you see up here earlier in chapter 11 that this earthquake is associated with the two witnesses you see in verse 8 where it says their dead body shall lie in the street of that great city that's in chapter 11 but when you look up 
further in chapter 15 that you see the seventh angel about to sound. And looking over here in chapter 10 and verse 7, you can see that this seventh angel is preparing himself to sound. You have to come all the way back over to chapter 9 to see when the fifth and the sixth angel sounded. The fifth angel sounded in verse 1 of chapter 9 and the sixth angel sounded in verse 13 of chapter 9. So after the sixth angel sounds, will you have a earthquake right after the appearance of and falling of the two witnesses, it is after those two events that you will have the earthquake right before the seventh angel sounded. And we know that the seventh angel sounds at the end of the tribulation. Some believe it's actually in the middle of the tribulation. Either case, that's either three and a half or seven years after the first earthquake that we see over here in chapter six. And chapter 8 because that earthquake occurs before any of the angels sound the trumpets don't actually start blowing until chapter 8 and verse 7 but we already talked about the earthquake in verse 5 and we already talked about how it's the same earthquake over in chapter 6 and verse 12 so there are in fact two earthquakes one at the beginning of the tribulation the great day of the Lord and then one in the middle of the tribulation or at the end of the tribulation I believe it's actually in the middle of the tribulation because you remember that the two witnesses prophesied for three and a half years so I guess that could be in the middle or at the end but the point of this video is that there are in fact two separate earthquakes that will occur over the course of the tribulation. Now, like I said, I have been thinking about this for a long time and I haven't found anybody talking about it on YouTube or Google or anywhere else for that matter about the, how there are two earthquakes in the book of Revelations. But it was the third testament that actually got me thinking about it when I saw this verse over here in chapter 55 of the third testament of the Bible. Chapter 55 of the third testament of the Bible is called the purification of the world and humanity in the judgment. When you see the word purification of the world, that should make you think some bad things are about to happen to this planet. Well, you see in verse 69, it says three quarters of the surface of the earth shall disappear. This is talking about the global earthquake. Remember, the prophet said that this earthquake would shake down every building. We hear in the third testament that three quarters of the surface of the earth shall disappear and one quarter only shall remain as a refuge for those that survived the chaos. But look at this part right here in verse 70. It says, do not be confused because before the closing of the sixth seal, great things shall happen. The heavenly body shall show great signs. The nations of the earth shall lament and of this planet, three quarters shall disappear and one quarter only will remain in which the seed of the Holy Spirit shall grow as new life. See, when it said that part right there about don't be confused while it's talking about this earthquake, it seems to me to be saying that there was going to be two separate earthquakes. Don't be fooled by the first earthquake that you see at the end, at the closing of the sixth seal, because there will be another earthquake. Now, which one of them is exactly is going to be this one that takes away three quarters of the earth? I believe this is actually the second earthquake because you see how it says humanity will begin a new existence united by one single doctrine, one single language, and one single bond of peace and brotherhood. This has to be the one that happens at the end of the tribulation because the first earthquake actually starts the tribulation. When we get that earthquake at the end of the sixth seal, the world is going to be thrown into utter chaos. 
Again, that information is found over in chapter 55 of the Third Testament of the Bible, which you can find a link to in the description of this video. In a section called Natural Catastrophes and Earthquakes, it talks about many of the things we are looking forward to in this tribulation. But one of the things I believe we could be sure to look for is actually two separate earthquakes. I just well thought I'd share this with you guys, see what you guys had to say about it. Please leave a comment below on what you think about the idea that there may be two earthquakes in the tribulation. And please go ahead and hit that like button and consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't done so already. I hate to pat myself on the back, but we are tending to find a lot of scriptural truths nowadays. I think that has a lot to do with knowledge increasing in these end times. So go ahead and ring that bell so you can get future videos as they come out. Shalom.